Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you guys doing? This is going to be hopefully a three to five minute refutation of our brother Abu Ayyad, who has been a long time since I've refuted him. He, this man has written about 350 pages of published document about me, looking at my Speaker's Corner's doc, uh, stuff. And it's really a repeat, like, uh, you know, I, I didn't read all of it, but I skimmed through the majority of what he said. And it just repeats what he says in like one volume to another or one paper to another. Um, a lot of it is just like insults and stuff like that and yeah. and so on. However, what I wanted to do is refute him in three to five minutes to show that this man yeah. has a real dogma in the way he believes uh, in the deen. And he's got blinkers which don't let him see outside of the scholarly interpretation of certain Saudi Arabian scholars. In particular, Ibn Baz, obviously, Abid al uh Ibn Al-Faymin, etc., etc., Tawajuri, and so on and so forth. And so we're going to use the case study example of um, of, 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 of the uh, static earth or the geocentric model which he believes in. Now, he does believe that, and look, I'm, I'm, I'm reading this uh, word for word. He believes, he's got an article in, uh, titled, Takfir of the one who denies night and day are through the actual motion of the sun around the stationary earth. Basically, he thinks it's kufr, but you can't do takfir of the person who, who believes in that. Now, this is a very unusual position. Why does he believe that? Because Ibn Baz said it. Now, uh, he, he says, look, he has uttered, everyone who has uttered this statement, i.e. that the, 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 yani a, a heliocentric statement, has uttered disbelief and misguidance. Yeah. I mean, look at this. I'm going to read it out to you, actually. Sorry. This is the title. Takfir of the one who denies night and day are through the actual motion of the sun around the stationary earth. Yani that the earth doesn't revolve around its own axes. Uh, and he, he, he quotes Ibn Baz. And then he, he, yani he's making this claim. And then you'll find in his own publications, this guy is arguing for the geocentric model, etc. I mean, why do you have to go through all of this when you have, okay, this is Ibn Baz, but Al-Albani, said, in his opinion, he believes that the sun, uh, sorry, that the earth is moving, is not stationary. So wait a minute, this shows you the, the, the ridiculousness of it. If you follow Al-Albani, you believe that the, you know, that the earth is moving. It's moving. I'm going to leave this. It's a translated maqala of what uh, Al-Albani said. And he said that this could be seen from some of the verses of Quran. But if you take it from Ibn Baz, who's one of the other Saudi scholars, he says, no, it's kufr to say this. That the earth is not stationary and that the sun is going around the earth. But Albani recognizes the, the input of uh, science here. He says that, you know, in, in the time of Ibn, Ibn Taymiyyah, they looked at two things. They looked at what the Quran said, but they also looked at what the natural phenomena is. And he said that the Quran itself indicates two different things. And there's no qat'i uh, verse here. There's no qat'i verse, meaning a very definitive verse. But he starts using derogatory language against those individuals who don't believe in this this model of the universe, which is, I'm not saying it's, I'm not going with a scientist, scientism approach. I don't care if you believe in the geocentric model. I'm not saying, you know, I'm not attacking you for that. That's very courageous of you to come out of the closet and say that. But, the, you, you, I mean, uh, not rejected except by an arrogant denier, one who's devoid of intellect or a simpleton. Bro, in the grand scheme of things, I think most of the, the people will say that your approach is a simpleton approach. You know, to have such a dogmatic position on such an area, you know, of geocentric uh, geocentricity, like I mean, what, it boggles the mind. And then to try and draw diagrams and these things, and to, to prove the geocentric position when you have scholars who are as senior as Ibn Baz in the case of Alban, who are scholars you also take from, who don't even believe in that. So why do you have to? This shows you that you, when you believe in, when you when you do taqlid, bro, you do taqlid on the next level. Yeah, and this is not a hukum even. This is a khabar. This is something about the natural phenomena. It's not going to affect your practice, as Al-Bani said himself. It's not even going to affect your practice. But this shows you, this case study example shows you how you guys, um, with all due respect here, yeah, how you guys take the deen, take one opinion within it, whether it's in ahkam shara'iyah or whether it's akhbar khabariyah, yeah, narratives or rulings, and, and you become so dogmatic about it, that it's impossible for someone to, to go against this opinion. Whether it's tabdia opinion, takfir opinion, whatever it is. And this is going to be the end of you guys. 
And because I know a lot of people now from the S pubs are listening to me. And I know they believe in what I do you know what? I promise you there's gonna be a lot of people in the S pubs that are gonna agree with me. They're gonna to say to me, I'd rather have an open mind on geocentrism versus heliocentrism. Right and, and actually take some of the opinions of Albani. Why do we have to take such a dogmatic opinion on the geocentric model? It doesn't feel right in your heart, does it? For the S pub that's listening to this, it doesn't really feel right in your heart for you to, to do. And it's not because, oh, the Western science and the Copernican revolution is what defines what we see as the correct science. I mean, in a theoretical sense, from a philosophy of science perspective, things can, can somehow change and the heliocentric model can change. But what we're saying is that the Quran is not very clear on these issues of, uh, of exact scientific theory, theory, as Albani said. As Albani said, I'm going to use an authority that you agree with. So in that case, why are you being so dogmatic about it? This is a khabar. So, if this is a khabar, if this is a narrative, what are you going to do with the ahkam? What are you going to do with the tabdiyah and takfir? So you see, this case study example is enough to show that the SPOB model of dogmatism, it introduces shak for deen. It introduces shak, uh, grave doubts that people have of the religion of Islam. And so I would say, move away from these cults. And, and if you agree with me here, if you're an SPOB, then make this the first step yeah, of your removal from this kind of taqlidi, sheepish um, mentality where you have to follow one sheikh and one opinion. When there are other opinions and other sheikh that have ijtihadi powers and that have these, like we've shown with Albani. And I know you take from Albani. So that's what it should be. I know seven minutes, I said it will be five. But believe me, this one, uh, one voice note will be enough to dismiss the dogmatism of this Abu Ayyad. If you want to call people simpletons and arrogant because they believe in a heliocentric model, which has heavy evidences from a scientific perspective, yeah, I mean, that's you. I think a lot of people will be calling you the simpleton one, or you, you, you the arrogant one. I won't be calling you that though, because inshallah, we'll keep it civil. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa